This film is intended for eye surgeons for training and education purposes. Viewer discretion is strongly recommended. Hi, this is Dr. Deepak Meghur and I'm here with another very interesting case. She's a 75-year-old lady who presented with a pain, a redness and watering for some time. She's undergone a surgery about uh, one and a half years back and since then she has been very symptomatic. Her vision is not good. Obviously, she is suffering from recurrent episodes of uveitis. The pressures are all right so far but there is a hint of a corneal decompensation happening because of this haptic which is touching the endothelium. Well, the reasons are very obvious. This is a an posterior chamber PMML lens which has been placed in the anterior chamber probably because there was a vitreous disturbance and the primary surgeon thought of placing this PC lens uh, into the anterior chamber. So now we have a situation where it's almost an year or year and a half the lens is stuck there. Obviously, we need to explant it and uh, replace it with another lens. So at this point, I'd like to you to pause the video and maybe take a pen and paper or write down what are the thoughts how are you going to perform the surgery so if you're going to explant the lens what technique are you going to use what are the things which you're going to anticipate or difficulties you're going to face and what precautions are you going to take to minimize any further damage you can always comment in the comment box and then you can just analyze how it was managed here okay let me start the primary objective is to explant this lens and replace it with an another lens. In this case, I'm going ahead with an iris supported uh, lens that is the iris clip lens. Now, during the process of the surgery, what are the difficulties which I'm anticipating and what precautions I need to take? Number one, the lens is stuck there for quite some time. There's inflammation and it could be, you know, having membranes sticking around the haptics. And more importantly, there's always a possibility that vitreous would be around it. If I'm trying to pull the lens out, I don't want any traction to be transmitted via the vitreous fibers to the vitreous space. So that would be my primary goal. Before explanting the lens, I want to ensure that there is no vitreous around the lens. If there is vitreous around the lens, I would like to take care of it first before touching the lens and pulling it out. So that is my primary objective. Other things would be like, you know, I need to be careful not to damage the endothelium there could be a risk of causing a desmond membrane detachment, especially from the inferior part because the haptic is quite close to the cornea there. So I'm going to use adequate amount of OVD to safeguard the corneal endothelium before pulling the lens out. So let's begin the surgery. Surgery is being done under posterior subtenance anesthesia. As I'm creating the conjunctal flap, one can notice the amount of fibrosis which is set in because of secondary healing. So I'm going to perform a 6mm steril tunnel. I'm not very sure where the primary incision, but about 1.5 mm from the limbus, I'm making a straight 6 mm incision because the PMM lens, I expect it to be around 6 mm and I want to negotiate this PMM lens through this incision. The sclerocorneal tunnel is done. At this point, I don't want to enter the main incision at all. So I'm going to create two small side ports exactly 180 degrees apart. I'm using a trepan blue to stain the blade when I'm doing paracentis incision so that I can identify it much more easily. The first thing which I do here is to inject diluted triamcinone acetate so that I can identify where the vitreous is. It's quite dramatic to see the vitreous blob which was not at all evident there. So we can see the vitreous is hugging the lens in fact and uh, so if we had pulled the lens just like that without acknowledging the presence of vitreous, obviously we would have induced significant traction of the vitreous space. So identifying the vitreous was probably the most important step in this surgery. With the irrigation in my left hand, I go in with my cutter and deal with the vitreous which is trying to come through the side port now. Then the bevel of the vitrector is turned down and I perform anti-vitrectomy. In a couple of minutes, the vitreous which is around the lens is cleared off. The chamber is filled with OVD. I'm entering the main scleral tunnel incision with 2.8 keratome and the inner corneal lip of the scleral corneal tunnel incision is enlarged. OVD is injected in front of the lens and behind the lens. I'm using a Sensky hook to just dial the lens around a little bit 
uh, just to ensure that it is freely mobile and it's not entangled in iris tissue or any inflammatory membrane is not holding it. And the haptics are oriented in such a way that uh, it's easy for me to negotiate the lens out of the bag. Then using a dalji lens holding forceps, the lens is grasped and then pulled out of the eye. Explanting the lens was very easy, but identifying the presence of vitreous initially and taking care of it was far more critical. I go in with my cutter once again and trying to do some more antivitrectomy. At this time I noticed that the, there are some small inflammatory fibrils or probably a combination of vitreous fibrils along with the inflammatory membrane sticking onto the anti-surface of the iris. So I want to clean it up and I'm using the cutter itself in a very controlled manner to cut out all the membranes or small fibrils which are on the anti-surface of the lens. A little bit of more antivitrectomy in the retropupillary area. Just want to ensure that uh, there are no more inflammatory membranes or vitreous around. Once I'm convinced about that, time to do a peripheral laryctomy. So I'll be using the IA cut more and the cut is in a linear fashion and the laryctomy is done. Retracting the iris and just trying to visualize any vitreous fiber underneath it and try to take care of uh, every single bit of vitreous fiber. Trying to implant the iris clip lens. I'm using just a little bit of pilocarpin to bring down the pupil. But because the spring tree is atrophic and uh, the pupil was fixed at this position for quite some time, it's not coming down. The lens is gently introduced into the eye under the cover of OVD. Then the lens is now gently maneuvered so that the both the haptics are at uh, 3 and 9 o'clock position and the notches are near the vicinity of the side port incisions. I'm using a 26G cannula which is introduced first, followed by the forceps to grasp the lens. The notches of the forceps are exactly at the level of the notch, so that it helps me to identify where to press on the iris. So the lens is pushed up and the cannula goes down and we can see the puckering of the iris. I just want to push the iris one more time and I'm pretty certain that the enclavation is pretty good. In fact, I can see uh, the haptic jetting across the iris tissue. The iris stroma is probably atrophic and uh, I can see the haptic coming across. So it's unlikely that this is ever going to get disengaged. The hands are switched. Time to enclave the other haptic. Again, the lens is stabilized with the forceps. The haptics are pushing against the iris and the 26G cannula just pushes the iris backward and we can see a small pucker appearing on the anti-surface of the lens and the lens is moved sideways just to confirm that the iris also moves along with it. This is a confirmatory sign that the notches are well and truly holding on to the iris stroma. So now it looks like the lens is quite well stable. The pupil is slightly eccentric but it eventually it should settle down and uh, Time to remove the OVD and the muck which is there behind the lens. So in this case, typically I use the main incision itself to introduce both the cutter as well as the irrigation cannula. The eye would be soft and it would be quite a challenge to introduce the irrigation cannula through the very narrow side port incisions and that's the reason I prefer to go through the main incision at all. All the muck which is behind the lens, the vitreous and the OVD and some amount of blood which would have seeped in is all cut and aspirated out. We can see a few area blobs of the triamcin acetate which will be remaining and uh, we will be monitoring the intraocular pressures in the subsequent days and weeks. The OVD in front of the lens is also cleared off and some of the blood which is probably sticking out of the lens is all just cleaned. The OVD is burped out and that's it the case is done. 
That's it, the lens to be fixed well, a time to close. Since the patient had a significant amount of pre-existing stigmatism, it's against the rule, I'm going to use a single suture at 12 o'clock to counter this uh, astigmatism. Tenonylon suture is uh, put and the conjunctiva is closed with etovicryl. Intracranial antibiotics are placed, that's it, the case is done. Now these are the first day post-op pictures. The cornea was steamy on the first post-op day, but there wasn't any evidence of inflammation. Pressure was around 20s and uh, with time, patient's vision improved and we have been monitoring her with OCT macula at every visit. So far, so good. The cornea is clear and the macula also presently, as of now, looks to be quite healthy. The pressures are normal and she's doing fine. Okay, to summarize, whenever we want to explain the lens, always we need to understand the principle that we cannot pull the vitreous along with the lens. The first thing to always do is to take care of the vitreous around the lens and then explant the lens out. So that was it. Thank you for watching and hope you found this helpful.